Hi, Jason Sullivan here. It's Friday, time for another video, so I thought I'd do a third one on dynamic harmonic fluency. So I've made two videos where I've used a simple chord progression, and all I did to change the chord progression was change the one chord from root position to first inversion. So today I thought I would make a third video using that one chord in second inversion and seeing what happens. As you can see, I wrote on the board behind me, I took a simple one chord in the key of B flat and I put it in second inversion. So you'll see F and B flat and D, and then that would most likely lead to a four chord that is in first inversion because the F would most likely lead to the G in the bass voice. So then you'd have G, B flat, E flat. So let's just play through that in the keys and we'll talk about each key and just kind of remind ourselves what key we're in. So starting in the key of B flat, it's going to be a B flat chord to an E flat chord. Now if we go to the key of B, then it's going to be a B chord to an E chord. C chord, F chord, C chord. D flat chord to a G chord to a D flat chord. D up to G. E flat up to A flat. E up to A. F up to B flat. G flat up to C flat. G up to C. A flat up to D flat. A up to D. And then B flat up to E flat. So obviously this pattern can be played all over the range of the instrument. And you can repeat, you can do the one chord a couple of times, then do the four chord a couple of times, you can change the articulation, you can do all sorts of things, uh, work on some of those alternate positions that just seem to fall naturally. We talked about that last video. Okay, so let's take a one chord second inversion and now uh, progress it to a five chord, which will most likely be in root position because the F will hold through in the bass. So, uh, using 100 beats a minute, Eighth note pulse, I think it's a good uh, speed uh, to start out. Obviously, we can go faster to work more uh, velocity in our technique, uh, and we can go slower to work maybe uh, careful, more carefully on intonation or breath control, phrase, things like that. So it's kind of you know, right in the middle of the road there. Okay, so starting on a B-flat chord, it's going to go to an F chord. And you'll notice I resolve the A up to B-flat, so I'm actually resolving up to tonic. Okay, in the key of B, it's going to be a B chord to an F sharp chord, resolving to B at the end. C chord to G chord. So now it's going to be a D flat chord, and the dominant is going to be A flat. A D chord and the dominant is A. An E flat chord with the dominant being B flat. E chord with the dominant being B.
get the idea. Once you know the music theory behind it, you can follow the pattern. So by practicing my chord progressions this way, I'm playing arpeggiated patterns, but I have to stay very mindful and very engaged with where, I'm in the, where I am on the instrument in terms of what note I'm playing, but also on a more global perspective, what chord am I in the middle of? And that's kind of like a higher level of just knowing where you are on the instrument. A lot of athletics research uses the phrase response orientation. Uh, do you have an awareness of where you are? Uh, for example, if a quarterback has a good response orientation, they have an awareness of where all the other players are on the field so they can make the appropriate decision about where to throw the ball or who to give the ball to. We need response orientation on a micro level and a macro level. The micro level, actually many levels, but if just to start the conversation, a micro level might be what note am I playing right now? And a macro level might be, what chord am I arpeggiating right now? So by doing these simple chord progressions as opposed to just static arpeggios where you just learn some little pattern, uh, I can still remember my all-state arpeggiated patterns by the numbers. It was like memorizing a phone number, you know, 5312. It was that, you know, for D flat. Um, so this is a much more engaged way to kind of learn your way around this instrument, and it leads to some more fluency, not only in the patterns, but also in the repertoire. So let's chop through this third pattern, and then we're going to start doing some four-note patterns in the weeks to come. Happy practicing.